Hey, welcome back. So we've been talking through ideas in our physics unit on forces, and we need to talk about tension today. So that's what we're going to talk about. First off, I want to address what tension is. So you may not know. What is tension? Well, it's a pulling force, and it is transmitted through a rope, a string, cable, something along those lines. And it's important to note that tension pulls with the same force on both the objects that are connected together. So an example tension problem would be something like this. This is where we're going today. This is the problem that we're going to be solving. I've got four masses right here, A, B, C, and D. And the question is about what is the tension force in between C and D? So the force on D from C, you could say, or the force on C from D. They are the same numeric value in opposite directions. We know the external force to the right is going to be a positive 45 newtons, and the external force to the left is going to be a negative 20 newtons over here because it's going in the negative x-axis. All right, so let's talk about our strategies for dealing with tension. So keep in mind that tension on one object from the second is equal and opposite in direction of the tension of the second from the first. And this is just a consequence, a logical consequence of Newton's third law, right? For every force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. Fair enough. All right. Secondly, if there are multiple objects, and this is a crucial strategy, if there are multiple objects connected with the ropes or other connectors, those objects will accelerate together. So notice we have four objects here. They are all going to accelerate together as long as you haven't had an acceleration that changes direction anytime recently in the past. As long as these strings are taut, you could say there is going to be tension in them and they will all accelerate together. Well, we can exploit that because we can solve for the overall acceleration for the entire system. And then that is equal to the acceleration for each of the individual components. And lastly, the other thing I want to do is mention, please use all of the other strategies we've talked about as well. Primarily what we're going to do, though, is use the sum of the forces strategy for the overall system first, get the overall acceleration, and then use that acceleration when we do the sum of the forces for each of the individual components that we need. All right, so that's generally how we're going to do this. Let's take a look at this in action. So remember I said if there are multiple objects, then those objects will accelerate together. So we're going to treat this as one entire system, kind of like one object. And we know our external force here, our external force here. So we're just going to use the sum of the forces strategy for this entire system, you could say. So this is one external force. This is another external force. Remember the sum of the forces. The first step is just to say what is the sum of the forces. Literally speaking, what is the sum of the forces, you could say. And that's what we've done with the first line. The second line is Newton's second law. And the only difference here is that we're talking about this as an entire system. So we're going to use our total mass over here. And that's going to be the acceleration overall for the entire system. Then we set them equal to each other. And we start thinking about if our acceleration is zero and what our variable is. In this case, our acceleration is not zero and it happens to be our variable, right? That's the thing we're looking for. So we're going to go ahead and isolate for that. So I'm going to isolate off to the right because I'm running out of room. And then I go ahead and plug in some numbers and I get my answer. So that's my overall acceleration for the entire system. But that's also the acceleration for each of the individual components. They're all equal to each other because they're all moving in unison, you could say. All right, well, good. Next, we're going to follow our strategy and do the sum of the forces now on an individual component. So now I'm going to look at D because this is asking about this tension force right here. So if we focus on D for our calculations using the sum of the forces strategy, that'll help. So we say the sum of the forces is equal to, well, on D, we've got this force going to the right over here, 45 newtons. And then we've got this tension. It's going to the left, so I'm going to make it a negative value here. The tension on D from C, you could say. And that's actually what we're trying to solve for, right? As usual, the second line in the sum of the forces strategy is going to be mass times acceleration. Here, we're not talking about the entire system. We're talking about the individual D component here. But we know our acceleration here for D is the same as the entire acceleration for the entire system. All right, so then we can set these two equal to each other. And we start to think to ourselves, what do we know? What do we not know? And is anything zero? At this point, our acceleration is not zero. It's something that we just solve for. And we don't know what our tension is. So we're going to go ahead and start to isolate for that. And then we can plug in our numbers at the end of the problem. We always do this at the end of the problem, including units. 
and we solve and this is going to be our answer and so that's how you're going to do a tension problem there's more to it than that but that's a good introduction of the major strategies you're going to be using while you're working with tension problems i'm going to be doing more screencasts in the future on this unit of forces and other units in physics as well if you have any comments please throw one down below and i hope you have a great day take care